that that uh, uh, that that they will we will receive power on the day of Pentecost will fully come and and they were all in one place and on one accord and and the Bible says suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them the Bible says and they all began to speak with other tongues that the Spirit of God gave utterance that was the beginning that was the beginning of the New Testament church Peter then comes out of that upper room along with the other 120 and they they are speaking in another language some were speaking in in languages that uh, were common to the region and we see that uh, earlier also in the uh, chapter 2 of Acts where uh, where they are speaking uh, uh, in languages the Bible says that we hear them all speak in our tongue the wonderful works of God they were amazed that God would use these men who, who perhaps were not as educated as the others perhaps they did not have all the world experience as the others but God spoke through them God spoke through them in various languages the wonderful works of God. These men uh, and women who were there, they, uh, they, they witnessed this and they were amazed. They were amazed. Peter then stands up to preach. She starts talking about this Jesus, this Jesus that, that they had crucified, this Jesus that they had rejected, this Jesus that they had, had uh, uh, amen, uh, uh, cast aside, this Jesus who they rejected as the God from glory. He says it is he that has given us this power to speak in these languages. It is he who is the Christ. It is he who is the Messiah, the one that you crucified. He is both, as Peter says, both Lord and Christ. He is not just, uh, amen, another prophet from somewhere around the way. He is not just another preacher. He is not just Joseph's son and Mary's son. He is not just James' elder brother. But this Jesus, who you crucified, is both Lord and Christ. In other words, he is the sovereign ruler of all uh, that we may survey in this creation. He is also uh, not just the ruler but he is the one who has been given to us to save us from our sin from our sins. It is this Jesus that you crucified that has given us this power to speak with other tongues, given us this power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus, he prophesied to them. He said that he would go away, but he would send a comforter. He would send a comforter. He would send a comforter, a paraclete. He would send the Holy Ghost to teach them all things that he had said. And because of that prophetic word, from Jesus. Now we see in the uh, in Acts 1 and 2 uh, the manifestation of the word of God. Now these men who were, who, who came to, uh, uh, and to Jerusalem it was the day of Pentecost and if you know anything about Old Testament history, Pentecost was the celebration that Jews from all around the diaspora, around Africa and around Greece and around the Mediterranean, different places, the Jews would come back to Jerusalem to celebrate what they had experienced, the mighty hand of God bringing them out of bondage in Egypt. And at that moment, at that time, it was God's design that having all of those folks who, who knew God in a certain way come back to the place where they had known God, where they had, uh, uh, it was the Holy Spirit city, Jerusalem. Now they were going to witness the outpouring of the Spirit of God. They were going to witness revival. They were going to witness, amen, something new taking place in their life. And because at that moment God had decided, uh, amen, to, to release His Spirit, these men now were gazing upon men who were coming and women coming out of this upper room speaking in languages that they did not learn in school, speaking through the power of the Holy Ghost. And then people Peter, he, he, he is, he is a, a central personage in the New Testament story because it is Peter, amen, who, uh, who was the one who was outspoken. It was Peter, the one who didn't have a problem speaking his mind. Peter, Peter was the one uh, to whom they, when Jesus asked, who do men say that I am? Who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said that 
flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, Peter. And then he tells Peter, he says, uh, thou, thou, uh, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Peter was a man close to Jesus. He was a man that was in the inner circle of Jesus. Anytime, anytime you read in the New Testament, and uh, particularly in the Gospels, when Jesus is going about doing miracles, there are three men who were with him all the time. It was Peter, James, and John. And Peter was the man uh, uh, to whom that God, or uh, Jesus, had uh, given, amen, the keys to the church, to the authority uh, after his ascension. He, he was the man that, that, amen, became the leader of the church. And this Peter, this same Peter, who, who rejected or rather who betrayed Jesus uh, and den or rather denied Jesus the same Peter who got the fussing and cussing when they said you we know that you're one of his disciples Jesus still gives him the authority of the church and I want to pause just to tell some of y'all doesn't matter where you come from it doesn't matter the pit, your history or your past as long as Jesus has saved you then your past is irrelevant I, I need somebody just to get happy about that that Jesus didn't save you uh, because of your past, but he saved you and called you in spite of your past. He, he didn't he didn't anoint you, he didn't anoint you because you were so wonderful, but he anointed you and called you and sanctified you even in the midst of all of the issues of your life. He still called you to call you out to save you so that you could be used mightily in the kingdom. Uh, I, I need somebody to hear this real quick. I need somebody here. I, I need somebody to know that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what people say about you. It doesn't matter what people think about you. It doesn't matter how people perceive you. As long as you understand that my past did not disqualify me from a future with God. Uh, Y'all not talking out here today. My past did not disqualify me to have a relationship with God. And even though I've got some dirty stuff in my past, i got some skeletons in my closet. Jesus Jesus still loves me and he still wants to use still wants to use me. I'm thankful for that. I'm th because, you know, I, I might have been like Peter. I might have been like those who, 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 who denied Jesus and ran away at the time of trouble, but, but he still saw fit to save me in the midst of my trouble. I'm so glad that Jesus doesn't care about how messed up we were. He still reaches down to the worst places of life and finds us where we are. There's an old song that said to the utmost Jesus saves. He'll pick you up, turn you around. Y'all not talking to me. He'll set your feet on solid ground. I'm so glad that Jesus saves. I'm so glad that he says so brothers and sisters. I got to get back to this text and, and, and we're going to get out of here very quickly. Um, I, I, I want you to see what's going on. Peter, this man, this man who had a history, who had a history uh, of talking. He had a history uh, of being boisterous and, and he had a history uh, of speaking up. It is Peter that stands in front of the apostles, uh, uh, in front of the other disciples, that uh, stands in front of, uh, amen, as it were, the first church of Jesus. He stands there beginning to preach, and we see it now, amen, through all through that second, the second half of the second chapter of Acts. Peter is preaching the gospel. He is letting them know, he is letting them know that, uh, uh, brothers, y'all think we drunk because we're speaking in another language, but I want to tell you that we are not drunk as you suppose, seeing as but it's the third hour of the day, but this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. He said, in the last days, saith God, I poured of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Y'all not talking out here. He said, I'll pour out my spirit on the handmaids. And I come to tell some of y'all out here today, brothers and sisters, that this hour that we're living in, I believe is the hour of revival. I believe this is the hour because you have to realize the last day started once Jesus ascended into heaven. Once he went up into heaven to sit on his throne, that was the beginning of the last days. And because we're still here, I believe that God is still wanting to pour out of his spirit upon our flesh. I still
still believe that God wants to see his sons and daughters prophesy under the unction of the Holy Ghost. I still believe that he wants people to be saved from sin. I still believe that he wants people to be delivered from the bondage of sin and the back debauchery. I still believe that the house of God is the place where God will be at his most powerful. I still believe that the church is necessary. The church is essential for the salvation of the world. And because we're still here, we got a responsibility, child of God, to tell the world that there is a Savior. There is a God in heaven. And his name Hallelujah. is Jesus. Have I got ten people out Thank there you. that can just open up your mouth and give God praise? Thank you, Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. So, Hallelujah. brothers and sisters, Peter, this one who was known for speaking up is preaching the gospel, preaching the gospel, preaching the gospel. Then the but the, the men said, Look now, but the Bible says in, in 37 that they when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts. Understand what that means, brothers and sisters. It doesn't mean that you've just been touched by a word, your emotions have been tickled. What that means is when the word penetrated them and it stepped to them and it made them evaluate their own condition. The Bible says they were pricked in their heart and asked them men and brethren, what shall we do? Brothers and sisters, if people outside of the house of God cannot see your light and ask how can I be like you, you need to check your salvation and check your Christianity because there ought to be something flowing off of you. There ought to be something pouring out of you that exudes the power Thank and the you. majesty of Jesus. There ought to be something. You ought not to have to tell somebody that you love Jesus. It ought to flow out of you. You ought to have oh, oh, man, yes. the spirit of oh, God Jesus. flowing through your life so much that people will ask you, what church do you go to? Y'all not talking to me. They ought to ask you right. if you're a Christian. They ought to ask you, how can I be like you? And brothers and sisters, the men and women who were there outside amen, of the upper room and they saw them come down and heard Peter preach the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. They had to ask the question because the message that they heard had changed their very thought patterns. It changed how they understood. It changed what they believed and said, how can we be like you? Then Peter, full of boldness in the Holy Ghost, he says you must repent. Hallelujah. Repent, brothers and sisters, means to change your mind. It means to change your thoughts. It means to reject everything that you were to receive what you can be. And I come to tell everybody out here today that repentance is not just for those who don't believe Jesus, but repentance is for those who are even in the house of God. Perhaps I got to ask you a question. Perhaps have you considered that perhaps the reason why you don't have any fruit of your evangelism is because there's no repentance in your heart? Have you considered that perhaps people would love come to know Jesus in your church if you had been repenting in your heart? I don't have no help today now. I wonder, have we lost the value of repentance? Have we lost the necessity of repentance to change our minds? And the Bible tells me, Peter said, repent. And I told you it means to change your mind. See, these men, these men were familiar with Jesus. You could not have understood, been familiar with the story of Jesus in those days and in that place because Jesus was a central figure in history. Now, now those, those historians, they may not want to believe that Jesus is God, but they certainly believe that Jesus was a man that walked the earth. And you can find it all throughout history that Jesus, and a matter of fact, they use, they use A.D. and B.C. to denote that Jesus did exist, but, but they may not want to believe that he's the Savior of the world. But I come to tell you that these men, these men, these men who ask how can we be like 
like you. They had an understanding and a familiarity with who Jesus is. And so when Peter tells them to repent, what he is telling them is you need to change how you think about Jesus. You need to change what you believe about Jesus. See, what the government wants to get you to see, brothers, is that Jesus was a traitor. He was a man, an insurrectionist, and so we had to kill him. But what they don't want you to believe is that Jesus is not just an insurrectionist, but Jesus is the Lord God from glory. The Bible tells me that Jesus, or rather God, was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. In other words, Jesus, God, God, God in the body of Jesus, <laughs> he put himself in the body of Jesus to bring you and I into close relationship with him. And they didn't want to tell them that Jesus wasn't an insurrectionist, but he was God in flesh. And so Peter, the full of the Holy Ghost, stands, amen, on that day to declare to them that this same Jesus who you crucified, ah, yeah. he is Lord oh, and he is yeah. Christ. This same Jesus Christ. who you refuse to believe is Lord and Christ. This same Jesus who you said was not the Son of God is both Lord and yeah. Christ. Hallelujah. And you got to repent. You got to change how you think about Jesus. You got to change what you believe about Jesus because Jesus is not just a prophet. He is not Isaiah, not Jeremiah. He is not Moses, but he is God in flesh. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Glory be to so, God. So, Peter, man, preaching a 